Harnett from Cornwall is going to talk to us about intensive horticulture, man versus machines, and he has been sponsored very kindly by the Studley College Trust. Rose. Your Royal Highness, my Lord, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. My name is Bruce Harnett and I own and run an ornamental young plant business in Cornwall called Kernock Park Plants. My project title is, as Julian says, Intensive Horticulture, Man versus Machine. Now, why have I chosen this topic, you may ask? Well, the way I see it in business, we have a plethora of ticking clocks, a multitude of sometimes alarming factors that can influence our business activities, competition, economics, social factors, to name just a few. Some we may be able to anticipate, others we may not. Technological advances is just one of these ticking clocks, and that is the one I chose to be the focus of my study. So whilst on the first set of my travels, I realized I was going to have to think of an easy way to recall the main themes of my study. So I devised an acronym, and that was RADIOS. The reasons for and against the implementation of technology, the advantages and the disadvantages of application, the inhibitors or barriers to employing technology, the opportunities and threats in this domain, and finally, the significance of the advance in technology, as well as the consequences of the decisions taken by business in mitigating or incorporating that technology. So where did I visit? Holland, for its amazing horticulture. Japan, its culture in general. Israel a great tradition of agriculture and horticulture within a very challenging environment. America and Canada, again, great horticultural nations. And back to Europe to revisit the Netherlands and also broached into Germany and Belgium. So I visited over 90 organizations in total, seeing some brilliant people and amazing places. I have time today just to mention a few of my findings. First, I focus on the RAD part, the reasons, advantages and disadvantages of employing technology. Labour and its availability has to be a key factor in this area. Let's start in Japan. Now, it's not on Neil's typical apple-growing latitude uh, uh, areas, but Taka is an apple farmer in Japan, and he said labor for him was not a problem at all. Travelers often come and volunteer their time for free to pick his apples and prune his trees. And the Japanese youth apparently want to be farm Corporation, on the other hand, Hellebores and Clematis, based at the foothills of Mount Fuji, had labor issues. They had a particular aging workforce, were losing the skilled labor, and therefore couldn't replace it. Let's jump to America. Now, my preconception of America was that it would be Mexicanized rather than mechanized. <laughs> and that is true to a certain extent. But it wasn't just that. Terry from Bailey's Nursery, Minnesota, said that it was more about the cumbersome nature of the recruitment of, of labor that was, was being a barrier to employing it particularly as the government is cracking down in this area as they realize the statistic that 50% of migrant laborers who work in U.S. agriculture are apparently illegal. And some commentators I spoke to said that this was an underestimate of the true scenario. Staying in the USA, labor cost is, of course, key in making decisions on technology. Dr. Kaki is a professor at Washington State University Center for Precision Agriculture. Now, he told me that there are 10 billion apples picked each year in Washington State alone. Now, a fact that I've just picked up yesterday, that this is enough apples side by side that go around the world 
20 times. So we agreed that it was inconceivable to think that in years to come, people would be moving their hands 10 billion times to pick apples in Washington State. He showed me a prototype robot that digitally maps the canopy of the apple trees, assesses the apple load, the ripeness, the location, and then another robot comes along and picks them. He said that the speed to pick would be five seconds for the robot, pick one apple, compared to two seconds for a person. So clearly not faster, but it's not just about the speed, it's also about the endurance. Back in the Netherlands, I saw the advantage of both speed and endurance in action when I visited Bacon Camp and its routing station down the road at Delhi Floor. Now, they still employ manual labour for sticking cuttings of chrysanthemum and dahlia, but more recently have adopted 28 sticking machines on this site alone. Here is one of the robots inserting 3,500 cuttings per hour, which is at least 40% faster than the average sticking personnel in the company. Of course, one added advantage to this speed game is that these robots need little sleep. So efficiency, and more specifically, precision and quality, is just another reason for using technology. Lori, Jordan Valley Herbs in Israel, he said he would automate all these processes if it was possible, anticipating future labour issues. But also due to the perceived quality of the output. This is what he called Cut 19 Tarragon, um, a specific cut of Tarragon, apparently destined for UK Marks and Spencers. Moving on to the key inhibiting factors. The availability of capital for investing in technology is clearly a key barrier. A great example of the extreme of investment required is Ems Flower. Tom Kuypers and his father, Benny, had the nerve to borrow in excess of 32 million euros to buy a block of farmland in Emsburg in Germany with the purpose to build a state-of-the-art 60-hectare glasshouse nursery. This includes a three-hectare logistics area. Now, to put that in context, that's nearly as big as my whole nursery. They had the desire to supply big volume to big retailers. Logistics is equal to finance as a barrier to automation as I see it. Batch sizes, variations or skews as they call them in America, unsuitable crops or working environment all are mentioned. Topography is a fairly typical barrier in this area. Here a tea plantation nestled on a hillside in Japan. Clearly there are limited potential for the application of current harvesting machinery. Conversely, this was described as a hill in Holland by Jim Coote, <laughs> owner of Van Sonnenkoot Tree and Shrub Nursery. No problems with automating on this flat site. Back across the pond now and looking at some key opportunities and threats. For me, it was increasingly clear by this stage of the journey that the robots are coming, whether we like it or not. This is Altman Plants, second largest producer of ornamental plants in the USA. I visited their Pyrrhus site in Southern California, and they have five HV100s, or Harveys as they call them, pot-moving robots. Harvest Automation, who design and manufacture these robots, have concentrated on robotic, robotics for agriculture, not just because of labor availability and cost, but primarily for health reasons. Many tasks in agriculture are clearly being very intensive and strenuous. Now this guy here showed me how he would move and space these outdoor roses traditionally. He picked up four of these two gallon pots and I estimated he had about 18 kilograms in each hand. There's no handles and he did this all day. Unbelievable. It's not all plain sailing for these robots. If there are fallen pots, or obstacles, that can cause problems. And sometimes they appear stunned into inactivity if Batman here comes too close to Robin. But supervised properly, there are no issues. 
I was told that each of these harvests are employed for 11 months of the year, with a payback of just 15 months for their $28,000 investment. It's important to notice that the tide of technology will not just be in the area of automation, as in the robotics, but also we will see some or well, lots of improvements in areas such as information system, system development. Advances in lighting for both greenhouse and enclosed vertical systems are witnessed both during my travels. Water efficiency is just one other continued advance. Improvements will save time and presumably have associated environmental benefits. One of the key conclusions I make is that we need to embrace the advance of technology, but it requires a significant amount of forethought and understanding where we are and where we want to be, not going blindly into a techno binge just because it becomes accessible. If the correct decisions are taken, it is likely that the principles of Jodoka that I saw in Toyota Factory Japan will be followed. This is a simple philosophy. It essentially translates as automation with a human touch. And any company, I suggest, striving for the perfect harmony of man and machine should be looking at these guys. And what for me in the future? Well, I'm already involved with a couple of industry projects, one of which is an HDC-funded project called Robot, and I'll be the commercial or one of the commercial mentors for a PhD student who will attempt to research and start to develop a flexible and trainable robotic aid for ornamental horticulture. I'm already, already drawing on much of the experience and confidence gained from the Nuffield process, and I'm undertaking a complete restructure of my own young plant company. And we're also impl implementing some of our own tech we're due to install the largest LED facility for any ornamental plant propagator in the UK. Of course, I will also be happy to share the knowledge and experience gained with any appropriate audience that comes my way. There just remains enough time for me to say a huge thank you. Thank you to my long-suffering wife and family for my predominant absence in the last couple of years. Thanks to the amazing people that I visited who were so incredibly generous with their time and knowledge. And it goes without saying, to Nuffield Farming Scholarships and my sponsor, Studley College Trust, without whom this would not be possible. Finally, my dad is here today, who's responsible for prompting me to do this in the first place. Thank you for listening.